like you to welcome to the top table the challenger for the WBA Super World Middleweight title fight from St. Helens. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the top table Martin Murray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the reigning WBA Super World Middleweight Champion, the undefeated Gennady Golovkin! <laughs> So then, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon and welcome to the Cafe Royal here in central London. This is to officially announce Thunderbolt in Monaco, where of course the main event scheduled for 12 three minute rounds of boxing is for the WBA Super World Middleweight title fight between Martin Murray and Gennady Golovkin. Scheduled for 12 three minute rounds of boxing, it will take place in Monaco at the Salle del El Toile on Saturday the 21st of February 2015. The event's going to be broadcast to tens of millions of viewers right around the world. Uh, for example, it's going to be live across the United States of America on HBO. It's going to be screened on Chinese television live across Africa on Supersport and presented here in the United Kingdom by Golden Gloves South Africa, the promoter of champions in association with Hennessy Sports, K2 Promotions, Maxi Nutrition, and live to millions of viewers across the United Kingdom on terrestrial television on Channel 5. World middleweight champion, a two-time world middleweight challenger, uh, 31 fights in the run, 29 wins, 12 inside the distance, one draw and one defeat on his record. The challenger and the fighting pride of St. Helens Merseyside, Martin Murray. In the reign of the champion, the reigning WBA Super World Middleweight Champion. 31 fights, 31 victories, 28 inside the scheduled distance. From Karaganda in Kazakhstan, Gennady Triple G Golovkin. So what we're going to do first of all is uh, welcome a few words from the top table. And uh, we'll start off on the top table with the gentleman who's here representing Monaco. This afternoon, we're going to introduce you to Mike Woodstock. Uh, obviously, all the members of the press, you are welcome to ask any questions uh, should you wish to as we go along. We'll start with Mike. Mike's got uh, a few words to say to you, first of all. But, uh, Mike, you are obviously representing Monaco as well this afternoon. Great, great coup for Monaco, this world title fight in February. Tell us, tell us what we can expect from Monaco. Yes, well, firstly, I'd like to um, thank uh, Andrew McHale for it. Is it working? Um, thank you very much. I'd like to firstly thank Andrew McHale for inviting me out here. And it's amazing, two years down the line, we've worked, Rodney Bowman from Golden Gloves, um, along with the SBM, John Louis Mazarel, who have been fantastic supporters of ours to reach a tournament and a, and a fight of this magnitude. Um, his Serene Highness Prince Albert's been a fantastic supporter of it as well and we've got to where we are today thanks to him, uh, Jean-Louis Mazarel. Um, Andrew asked me to explain who the SBM are. The SBM are the company that own the casino, the Café de Paris, the Hotel de Paris, the Hermitage Hotel and the Monte Carlo Bay. Um, they have backed us 100% and it's a pleasure for me to be associated with a tournament of this magnitude. We've had six fights coming up now, and uh, Martin's been on two of them, uh, Gennady's been on two of them, and this is the big one that we've worked for, and it's been an absolute pleasure meeting two young men like Martin and Gennady, who, Martin is a fantastic ambassador for his country, a, a true gentleman, a very humble person, and I wish him best of luck in Monaco, and the same applies to Gennady, a nicer young man you could never wish to meet. He's the pride of Kazakhstan. I've spent a bit of time with his manager, Tom Lofty, and I've met him and his family. They are fantastic people. So it's going to be difficult for me to watch this fight um, in February because they're such nice young guys. But 
for me, it's a pleasure to be here today. I wish them both luck and uh, make thanks for putting on the press conference. Thank you very much. Any members of the press, any questions at all for, uh, for Mike? Any questions at all about Monaco? Any questions about the venue? Yeah, sorry. Um, would you think of a bigger venue than the Salle des Etoiles? Because I was there in February and does it hold more than about a thousand people? Just to, uh, just to ask that question, what are you thinking about perhaps a bigger venue? Uh, this gentleman says he was at the venue in February and it was around about a thousand people. What do you think of it at all? I think it's a venue. It's a very good question. But we've looked into it, but basically when we started, we tried to keep this an upmarket um, event. I know the event is, is in a small uh, small venue, but it's an upmarket to do with the sort of quality that we expect in Monaco. So we've tried to keep it upmarket, suits and everything like that, and we've achieved it for the last five tournaments. Gennady's even come twice in a tuxedo, so it shows you how um, <laughs> he, he views the situation. Any other members of the press, any questions for that before we hand the mic over? Just a question for you. Uh, how much were uh, ticket prices? Uh, what will it start at? Sorry, say again? Ticket prices for the event. What will the ticket prices start at for the event, please? Well, the ones that are left was... Um, I didn't actually realise when Rodney Berman from Golden Gloves told me this is going to be the tournament <coughs> of 2015, the fight of 2015. <coughs> but from the way the um, ticket sales have been going, we've we, I think we've sold out 60% of the arena already. But the front row seats, which are limited, about 2,500 euros, going back to 1,500, um, 1,500 and 350. But there are very, very few left at the moment. Thank you. And our last slide, was any questions to Mike? Okay, then we'll hand over the microphone now to the general representing by the uh, Corporal Motors K2 this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll just hear from one of the Corporal Motors, uh, Tom Knopfler. Thank you. It's our pleasure to be here in London. We apologize that uh, we had a two-day delay for the press conference. Gennady finally got his visa to the UK, so we're happy about that. This is actually his first time uh, being here in London, so we're excited about that, and we're very excited about the fight February 21. This is really the true definition of a world championship fight between two of the top middleweights in the world. Gennady has clearly established himself as the best middleweight, and Martin, in our eyes, is is right behind him. Uh, the, the two blemishes on his record between Sergio Martinez and Felix Sturm, uh, from our side, we saw both of those fights and we feel there's a strong argument he should have won both of those fights. So really, in our eyes, it's, he's an undefeated fighter fighting Gennady, who's an undefeated champion. So the atmosphere in Monte Carlo, as Mike described, and we really have to give a lot of credit and respect to uh, Rodney Berman of Golden Gloves, Mike Woodstock, who's been tremendously instrumental in uh, hosting Gennady when he's fought there, and Martin's fought there also twice. So this is really the culmination of their vision that they had of bringing boxing to, to Monaco. It's really a, a truly world-class event. It'll be in over 100 countries worldwide. Um, Channel 5 here in, in the UK, thanks to, to Mick Hennessy, who we're really proud to be associated with as well. Um, HBO, the biggest uh, boxing uh, station in America. And, you know, the atmosphere at, at the uh, Salle d'Etoile is just, uh, it's amazing. You know, being so close to the ring and, and the fighters. I mean, Gennady fought at Madison Square Garden last year. He sold out the arena in Los Angeles uh, in his last fight. But the atmosphere that you have in this thousand seat uh, arena is something not to be missed. So anyone that can make it down to Monte Carlo and it's such a terrific uh, destination and resort city, it, it'll be an exciting event. Thank you. Any members of the press got uh, a question please for, for Tom? Anyone want to ask any questions to Tom? Well, I think what we'll do is we'll move on now to Andrew McHale, who is uh, the business manager for Martin Murray. Andrew sat on the uh, far left of the table. I should have bit. Uh, Andrew, how did, how did this fight come to fruition? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. And um, 
this this fight could have happened before now, but um, we were we were offered a fight with Felix Stern before we joined Golden Gloves, and um, the fight would have ended up we were in the same position as we were before we signed for Golden Gloves with options against us, and we wanted to get out of that situation. So Rodney offered us a, a great deal, and this fight was planned when we first started for them, so it was always on the cards. And we've had a great relationship with Golden Gloves, and, and Matt has been asking me to make this fight from day one, so he's got it now. And, and from a management point of view, how, how happy with you on how the view has been done where it is, and how Matt is progressing towards that title shot, number three? You know, well, to be honest with you, it's a very prestigious place to fight, and really it's a dream for Martin, really, he's fighting in Monte Carlo. You know, it's, it's a very prestigious place and, and Martin's ready for this fight. As Tom said, we view Martin the same. We, we view that there's arguments on both fights, um, Sturm and Martinez, that he, that he won both fights. And um, it's nice of them to recognise that. But this time, I'm, I think you're going to see the best of Martin Murray, without doubt. Any questions from the room for Andrew McHale? Any further questions? Anybody on the right side? Okay, what we'll do now is hand you over to the CEO of Hennessy Sports. To Mick Hennessy. Mick, this is a fantastic evening of boxing. We'll bring into terrestrial TV in February. Very proud to be doing that and, and tell us all about it, Mick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, firstly, uh, you know, I'd like to thank you for your great attendance today. Uh, under the circumstances and at short notice so much appreciated as always um, yeah very very proud to be involved in this super fight yeah, is, it, is there another one there very very proud to be involved in this super fight um, for me um, these are definitely the two top middleweights in the world um, it's a brilliant fight um, I'm also very proud to, to be able to bring this fight to the masses in the UK uh, via Channel 5 um, on terrestrial TV. In this day and age, you know, the casual sports fan very rarely gets to see, uh, you know, fighters of this calibre or fights of this, this level, this calibre, um, because these fights are normally on pay-per-view or, or subscription. But to, to have fights of this nature going out to the masses and the casual sports fans, is, is great for everyone involved, it's great for the sport, and um, you know, it's something that we want to try and do on a regular basis, so very proud, and I'd like to thank uh, Channel 5 and Maxi Nutrition for their great support in bringing this fight to the UK, uh, UK live on Channel 5. Um, it's a, you know, a great undercard, it's, it's got a British feel to it, we have a European title fight with Lee Haskins, and we also have Huey Lewis Fury. Or, or, it, or it could be Nick Blackwell, depending on his British title commitments. But um, brilliant undercard, and we're expecting huge viewing figures on Channel Five. And as everyone else touched on, you know, huge viewing figures around the world. This is a super event, and I'd like to con congratulate all the participants on this table for for making this fight. Thank you. Any questions for Nick? Whilst he has the mic for James. Mick, do you think this could bring in record viewing figures on terrestrial TV for Channel Five? Uh, just I just to ask that question again, uh, James is just asking, uh, do you think that this could actually bring in record viewing figures for terrestrial TV, the massive show here on Channel 5? Definitely. Um, I think the last terrestrial viewing figures, uh, the biggest one we've done was 3.2 million for um, Tyson Fury and Chisora. The one before that was Carl Froch versus Jean Pascal for the WBC title. That was 2.9 million. Um, that was at the end, the end of December 2008. Um, so Fury Chisora is the last, the highest, um, you know, terrestrial viewing figure. I think this can can do four million plus, plus with the right build up. Um, we've got a lot of time in front of us. It's going to be a big build up, and I definitely think four million plus, which would be tremendous for British boxing. Would I be right in thinking there'll be adverts on terrestrial TV promoting the fight beforehand and? other promotional stuff going on. Definitely, yeah. There's going to be a big build-up for this one. Cheers, me. Go on. Meet the uh, proximate ring walk. Will it tie in with America or will it be around the normal time we, we use them? We're looking at, we've kept it flexible, but we're looking at, in the UK, I think it's going to be 
anywhere from 9 p.m. Um, it could be something like 8.45, it could be the ring walk. So prime time in the UK um, couldn't be better. And the time the actual show as a whole begins on terrestrial television? That, that would be the time. Uh, right. it, it literally, say, if the ring walk is, is 8.45, then the show will start at 8.30. Right. Anyone else with a question for Nick? All right, Nick, well, if you'd like to hand the microphone down to, to Max on the end. Max, welcome to England. Thank you very much. You're the project manager of Gennady. What does it mean to be here? What's it mean to be uh, going to America with Gennady? Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, it's great to be here in London. It's first time for Gennady and for me uh, to be to be here. It's a uh, really nice city. Although the weather is not, not very nice today, but in Germany it's the same, so it's no problem. And um, it's uh, it's an honor to to for us to to be on the <coughs> in Monaco. Um, it's really the third fight for Gennady, and every time Gennady steps in the ring, he wants to to put a great show for the fans. So um, we all hope that this time will be a much greater show than uh, last time, and uh, we uh, go step for st step by step. And um, we want to thank all the fans for the support. And every fan, uh, and every fan in England is uh, uh, very special for us. So thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Any questions for Max? Uh, I think Max, if you'd like to pass the microphone to Mr. Gennady. And now what we'll do is we'll welcome both of our boxers to the microphones. So these two men are in the ring on Saturday, February the 21st in Monte Carlo. It's for the WBA Super World Middleweight title. We have the challenger, Martin Murray, and we have the champion, Gennady Triple G Golovkin. Gennady, I think we'll start with yourself. Firstly, on behalf of everybody at Hennessy Sports and everybody in the room, welcome to the UK, welcome to London. It's great to see you here. And uh, how much are you looking forward to the the the, uh, the fight with Martin on the 21st of February? Yes, of course. Good yeah, afternoon, everybody. Yes, of course. I'm very happy. Not just I have a big fight with Martin. I respect him. He's a great champion. He's a great fighter. You know, I promise a great show because I will have a lot of time for February 21st, you know, just welcome to Monaco. I promise great show, you know, because Martin is very strong. I think he, right now he's best opponent for me. I think great show for everybody. Big present. What's your thoughts on Martin? What, what, what have, you, have you actually studied anything about Martin? What's your thoughts on Martin as, as a boxer? Is, is Martin going to be a big challenge for himself? Right now he's the biggest challenger for me. You know, this is not step for me. This is a big fight for me. You and Alpha being a, a big hit, you lost two fights, round two, round three, the last 18 inside the distance. Martin has never been stopped. Absolutely correct. You know, just, I think before just not the same class for me. You know, just, I saw a lot of fights, Martin, Martin's fights, he's a strong guy. You know, I think big decision fight, I don't know, who, who win, I don't know. Your last two fights, Daniel Gill, uh, Marco Antonio and Rubio, do you think Martin poses uh, a bigger threat than most of his two opponents? Yeah, I think, yeah, Martin, he is biggest, more biggest. What do you think Martin's biggest strength is? Oh, power, size, you know, just different style. More class, just boxing class. Okay, so just keep holding the microphone now. We'll get Mark Martin on the microphone as well. And Martin, third time on a world title fight. Is it going to be third time looking? 
Yeah. Hello everyone, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, third time, third time fighting in a world title. Um, just want to say it's, it's it's great to be back fighting in big fights against against elite fighters like Golovkin. You know, as we all know, he's a great fighter, and it's going to be a tough fight for me. But I'm looking forward to the challenge. It's um, like I said, it's a tough fight, but with it comes comes a great opportunity for me. And you know, I'm going to take it with both hands. I'm um, I'm really looking forward to the fight and. You know, I'm, I'm, I, th I think going back to what you was, you, you asked uh, Golovkin then about his, his previous two opponents with Daniel Gein and, and um, Rubio, I think that they went in half beat and I think, um, you know, they was already beat before the game, where, where, whereas me, I'm, you know, I want the fight, I'm ready for the fight and I'm going in there wanting to win, so um, I am confident that I'm going to win. Um, you know, like Kennedy's a great fighter, we, we all know that, like I've just said. He's a great fighter and he possesses extreme power, but I think on my day I've got the tools to beat any middleweight in the world. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm quietly confident going into the fight on February 21st. Who's a big hitter? What, would you, what's your uh, biggest fear of Gavaldi? Um, I've, I've got no fears about him to be honest with you. Like you said, um, he, he's a big hitter. We, we all know that. Um, and he, he just possesses something that me other opponents have, have never possessed with a, with, with a knockout power you know i fought some fighters with good power but not with Golovkin so it's, um, it's a new challenge for me and a new test but like I've proved in any fight that I've been in before you know I deal with the situation and I think my versatility is going to win with this fight you, You're both in your early 30s as well now uh, do you think you're at the peak of your career now Martin? Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting into it. Um, maybe if things had gone well after the Stern fight and after the Martinez fight, where I'd have been a lot more busy, maybe I could have been, you know, into my peak a bit earlier. But my career stagnated, and um, you know, thanks to thanks to Randy Burnham and Golden Gloves, Mike Whitstock, and me, me, me agent here, Andrew McCann, my career's got back on track, and I'm going into this fight in, in good form, and I, I really do feel like I've just begun just getting into my prime. Do you? Echo as well what people said in the room about the Felix Sturm and uh, Martinez fight. Which, which do you feel harder by yourself? Um, to be honest, you um, that that's in the past. It, it is what it is. You know, I've, I've never I've never dwelled on them the them decisions. It, you know, I knew before I'm going to Germany, going to Argentina, and that that was the way it's going to be. And you know, I, I'd have to knock them out to, to get a win, and I never did that. So I was kind of expecting it, but I've you know I've not dwelled on that. I'm, I'm happy with the position and situation that I'm in now, so I've got to be thankful for that. Uh, and tell us about fighting in America as well, your last two fights against Max uh, Persag and uh, then Dominico Spada. Last one was a technical decision. Uh, what tell us about the, uh, how he's fighting in Monaco as well? Tell about yeah, it's, um, it, it's great fighting in Monaco. As, as people know, it's a, it's a beautiful place and, you know, the, where the show was last time, I can't pronounce it. What's it? What's it called? Like? Sporting club. Yeah, the sporting club where it was last. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not called that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's going to call Elders Elders Elder 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 Swan. Elder Swan. It went on. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was um, it, it was <laughs> great boxing in, in a venue like that. You know, it's um, like Mike said that th th this fight, it's a massive fight. Um, it's the two best middleweights in the world fighting each other. And they could have gone a lot bigger with the venue, but 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 they've kept it. You know, they've, they've gone for quality rather than quantity. And it's um, like I said, it's great fighting over there, and there's a great feel to it. So I'm looking forward to fighting fighting again there in front. And two very very respectful middleweights. What can we expect from you, Martin, on the build up to the fight? Um, uh, in 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 what way? What in, in how do you mean in, in what way? What in what way? As you can as you camp started already? Yeah, me, yeah, the yeah, yeah my camps my camp started already, so I've been I took two weeks off from the last fight. Started ticking over and you know, started a twelve week camp, so um yeah, just I am just gonna train hard obviously. Just as I know Golovkin will be. Um, you know, it's a big test for me, but like you said it's a big test for him as well. And you know, he's the two best middleweights in the world fighting each other. And thanks to McKenzie, it's live on Channel Five, and you know it's going to be going to be a great show and a great fight. What's that mean to you as well? Live on terrestrial TV across the UK, it's going to put you on a fabulous platform as well, Martin. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable exposure um, over there. Channel Five, like Mick said, the, the viewing figures that they're expecting to get, you know, it, it's phenomenal, and you know it's in America and all over the show, so. It's just great to be fighting regular and obviously getting getting the the exposure that I'm getting because. 
you know, like like I said, I suffered a bit in past where you know changing promoters, you know, fighting on shows with, with, with no television, and you know, I've just kept my head down, kept working hard, and you know, me and Alan, like I said, it's a I'm in a great place, and I'm very thankful for him. Just looking forward to the fight now. All the way now is uh, both of the boxers have got the microphone, so uh, if we can tense a few questions for either Gennady or Martin, please, if anyone would like to ask a question to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to ask a question? I'll repeat your question for you. Good afternoon, Zarina uh, Sifunit, Kaspors TV channel. Uh, Gennady, I have uh, one question for, for you. Uh, could, you share with your uh, could you share your impressions from your last visit to Kazakhstan? And how, how um, do you feel? Uh, will it help you? Uh, I mean, uh, not physically, <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, uh, your feelings and uh, uh, how, um, th what do you think about this support? And, uh, sorry, uh, could you uh, repeat your answer in Russian then? Thank you for your question. Just my visit to Kazakhstan is not my visit to Kazakhstan. I'm going to home, to my parents, you know, just. And I don't have a lot of time, just a couple of days, three days. I with my mom, you know, my family. Just I, I have meeting with a lot of fans. It's a great time, amazing time for me, for my team. Thank you to my fans, for my Kazakhstan fans. I'm very glad. Can I speak in Russian? A little bit. Не очень приятно было. Не очень приятно было быть дома. Это мой дом, и я просто благодарен всем моим фанатам, кто живет в Казахстане. Я желаю им здоровья. Thank you. Any other questions from the boxers? Um, I just heard you say maybe a 12 week training camp you're starting with, uh, is, is that generally your kind of period, your duration, is, or is it looking to do this one uh, slightly longer in, in the camp? Um, well, you know, in the past I've not really had, until I signed the Golden Gloves that was, I, I never really had steady dates where I could work towards, so I've, I've kind of just been in the gym ticking over and then I've took my chance when I, when I can, but uh, my last fight was, was 10 weeks, a 10 week camp, and yeah, we're just doing that bit longer for this one. Uh, we're doing 12 weeks, but you know, we, we, we've gone into it already fitter, um, stronger, and you know, but, but lighter and body fat lower than, than we did start of the 10 week camp. So, Golovkin's a great fighter, so obviously, I've just got to gotta take that bit more time to, to get myself in the best possible condition. Martin, this is a fight that you could have taken at an earlier date. Is it saying that yourself and your trainer, Oliver Harrison, have run through many times in your head how you're going to approach your tactics? Um, yeah, you, you could say that. I mean, I, when, I, when I turned professional in 2007, you know, I, I never dreamed that I'd be in this position where I am. You know, the background that, that I had, and when I turned professional, it was just about just being the best I could be. And that was just being involved in big fights, and that's what I've always done. I've worked hard, and once I got on world level, I, I kind of always knew that, you know, me and Golovkin will end up fighting, and, and so was Oliver. So we have kind of, you know, like like you've said in, in the past, we've worked on little things, but obviously other fights have come up in between, so we kind of like, you know, put that put that behind us, but put it to the side. But obviously we know the fights are now, so so yeah, we're just getting working on working on the fight properly. Gennady, will you do anything different in your preparation for this fight, looking at Martin, or is, do you just take every fight as it comes? Absolutely, absolutely. Every time different because, you know, different style, different size, different boxing class. You know, every time different. You know, I think this step, the biggest step for me. You know, I talk, I'm I talking with my coach. He have plan. I don't have plan right now. Now I have Weekend, <laughs> great meeting. I go to Big Bear to my training camp. I promise hard work every day, hundred percent. And you think that Martin Murray is going to be the hardest fight of your life? Yeah, right now, yeah. 
Right now, yes. Martin, are you doing anything different to approach this fight? Oh yeah, well, um, I, I, I've got, like I said, I've started a 12 week training camp, so I've got six weeks over there, and then I'm going finishing off um, in Johannesburg in, in South Africa, so coming over there, finishing off the camp for six weeks. Where are you now? Are you 100% now? Are we going to see the best of Martin Lee on the 21st of February? Yeah, without without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it's a tough fight, but as I've proved in the past, the, the, the harder the fight, the more I raise my game and, and, and the better I perform. So, so yeah, the people are going to see the best of me on February 21st. Anyone else with the audience? I'd like to ask a question to Martin. Hi, Martin. Um, I'm Martin Lee. Parties will be available to interview one more in a while, uh, but for now, on behalf of everybody at Hennessy Sports, K2 Promotions, and Team Gennady Block and Team Martin Murray, thank you very much for your support at uh, entertainment today. What we're going to do is ask Martin and Gennady if you could please just do a head to head for us for the cameras.